right, I need to figure out what is going on here. Pernia has sent me a little bit on this, and I've got some stuff pulled up. We're going to do some digging. Apparently, Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens are having beef. I just realized that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. On here, here, Fun behind the scenes. My Zoom is done in real time, not actually done in post. So I just fucked everything up badly, and I just unfucked it. I figured it out. I did it. I unscrewed everything up. Holy crap. Uh, Razor says, following WoW Pro, does the Gnome and Goldshire areas before Dunmoreau, before going to Westfall? The, the Gnome area is Dunmoreau. Like, the, the Gnome area is Dunmoreau. Gnomes and, and Dwarves share the same area. But just do, do two areas. Do two areas. Anyway, I need to figure out why Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens are fighting because this is interesting to me. Look at this shit. So, Ben Shapiro, or Candace, Candace posts this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Christ is king. Now, it should be noted that this is the phrase from the Bible. This is the verse that is used repeatedly by Christians as a way to argue that they are the mostest persecutists. They are the ones that are constantly taken advantage of by society. Uh, this is why it's them versus the world, because the world is against them. And that is how the Bible says it always has to be. If I take pauses in my speech, it's because I am coughing, because I am still sick. I'm on the men, though, because I have access to my voice. When I turn presenter voice off, this is what's left, which means I still basically have my voice back. But Ben Shapiro's response to this was this right here. Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. Now, I don't know about you, but a world where Candace is not in the Daily Wire is just a world where she's working more for PragerU. That's that's all that's going to be. But this is interesting to me because we don't get to see right-wing beef like this all the time. They tend to be a lot more united than the left happens to be, typically. Now, I have her response here as well where she goes, You've been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. And we've all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line when you come for scripture and read yourself into it. I will not tolerate it. Now, I think it's funny because this is actually just a workplace fight. All this is, this is office politics, 110%. This is Candace and Ben Shapiro having an argument over something that is not about scripture, and Candace is like, You came for my Bible! You came for my Bible! And that's not what's happening here. Like, there's... I think anybody with a reading comprehension uh, of more than, like, a couple of years can tell you that, no, Nobody is coming for the scripture here, Candace. You're the one who decided to post the scripture and insert yourself into there. You are not only, you're asking, you're telling Ben Shapiro he's reading into scripture, but you are the one who is reading yourself into that. You are saying that you are the peacemaker. You are saying that you're the child of God. It's hilarious to me to see this because she's upset that Ben Shapiro is doing the thing she is actually doing, but why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, we've got a little bit of news on this, and I want to see if it covers anything interesting, but we've got something else on top of this as well. But it says here that the Daily Wire founder, Ben Shapiro, urges anchor Candace Owens by all means to quit on Wednesday after the two feuded on social media about her coverage of the Israeli-Hamas war. The quarrel began with a TikTok video that went viral over the weekend, in which Shapiro blasts Owen's uh, faux sophistication about the conflict, adding that her disreputable commentary about Israel 
is ridiculous and full of errors. You know, if you're going to say something's ridiculous and full of errors, it's a good idea to point out when. I'm not saying that Candace Owens is known for her repute. She's not. She's a she's a pissmonger the way that everybody who works for the Daily Wire is a pissmonger. But says here, Owens responded by posting a Bible verse to X, the one that we already read here. Uh, and then Shapiro responded saying that if you're taking money from the Daily Wire, that comes between you and God, by all means, quit. She called Ben Shapiro emotionally unhinged. Owens joined the conservative outlet of the Daily Wire in November of 2020, saying she couldn't be more excited to join Shapiro and her colleagues in Nashville, Texas. Reactions on Twitter included people thanking Shapiro for finally speaking out about Candace Owens. They've been, uh, apparently saying, I've been saying for years that hiring Candace is the one massive mistake the Daily Wire has made. I genuinely hope they rectify it. It looks like Ben Shapiro has finally had enough for the European conservative contributor, Jonathan Van Maren. Now, I wonder why. <clears throat> so, Candace is no less transphobic, no less right-wing, no less economically right, philosophically like it, uh, on the right wing. She's no less any of these things than Shapiro is or Walsh is or any of them. And it's not about her religion because Walsh says that he's a Christian. It can't be about that. So what else could it be? What could be the one thing that she is that they are not, that they are not happy about? I guess I'll just let people in my chat ruminate on that one. I don't have an actual answer for that. I think it's more important to just consider the possibilities more than anything. In the past, Owens has been criticized for her bizarre reaction to a uh, Skims ad featuring a disabled model talk, uh, taking Kanye West's side after his anti-Semitic rants and her oddly supportive remarks about Hitler. Shapiro, meanwhile, went on, went on a 43-minute rant against the Barbie movie earlier this year. Isaac Bailey tweeted, I say the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, and Owens deserve each other. They built each other up. And this this I agree with. So let's get some context here. Let's get some context here. So this quote was provided to me uh, by Pernia, who is one of my artists. Uh, they are the ones who did the Sonic Onesie art, as well as several pieces of promotional art that have featured on the channel. Uh, but this is what Pernia has dropped in here. And I think it's very, very interesting. Candace Owen says, no government anywhere has a right to commit a genocide ever. There is no justification for a genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial of the state. And honestly, it should be easy to state that, right? Genocide bad. Genocide bad. Genocide is just a thing that you should be able to disavow. Should be easy, right? Shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard. Dave Rubin's response was, well, as I'm sure you know, Candace, the Palestinian population has gone up by five times in the last in the last few decades. But thank you for taking a strong stand against Hamas's stated genocide of the Jews, which is in their charter. So a couple of things here. Yes, the Hamas charter from, what was it, the 80s? Uh, did state that they wanted to eliminate all of the Jews. Now, that has been changed in more recent years from what I am, uh, what I understand, but that doesn't change the fact that there is a distinction between Hamas and Palestine. There's this weird fixation. There's this weird fixation, right, with trying to say that Hamas is... Uh, Palestine and Palestine is Hamas. Hamas mostly controls uh, Gaza, not the West Bank, which is why a lot of the attempts in uh, Israel uh, have been to il uh, not, well, yes, eliminate a lot of Palestinians, if not all the Palestinians in Gaza, but also to segregate them as far away from the West Bank Palestinians as possible. But... They said it changed in 2004. They only hate Zionists now. Right. But when it comes to legal charters, you have to still ask the question, did they write Zionists down meaning Jews or did they write Zionists down meaning Zionists? Because there's a lot of people who will be anti-Semitic and call it anti-Zionism. And vice versa. I will say it's very easy to not stand with Israel with a lot of this, though. It's not hard to look at the shit Israel's doing and go, oh, maybe that's a bit genocidal. Maybe that's bad. So, this is Dave Rubin making the common mistake when talking about genocide. 
This is the common mistake that people make when they're talking about genocide, where they think that genocide is just the elimination of people. Genocide is a 10-step process. The elimination is step nine. The elimination is step nine. Everything you do uh, up until that point, the dehumanization, the organization against, all that, that is, those are all still steps of genocide. A genocide is a genocide regardless of how far into the genocide you get. So, so I think I saw it made the distinction between Zionists and Jewish people, but I can't remember too well. And again, this is this is me talking off of the back of my hand. So don't take anything I'm saying a hundred percent. It said the genocide doesn't get better if they say they started it. No, it doesn't. It's like when, when somebody punches you in the face, you don't go, I'm going to eliminate your entire bloodline. Like, yeah, just, mm. maybe that's, maybe that's a step too far, right? Maybe that's a step too far. Um, Candace Owens quote tweeted Dave Rubin saying, what's amazing about this is that I didn't name any country in this tweet. I simply stated that genocide is wrong. Always. This is not a controversial stance. Interesting how you interpreted it. Dave Rubin said, yes, and I thank you for your strong stance against Hamas. I salute you. And Candace Owens said, uh, me, genocide is always bad. Dave Rubin, why won't you condemn Hamas? Absolutely demented. So, much like how every single time, every single time you talk about what's going on in Palestine or talk about what's going on in Israel, you don't have to say, but I condemn Hamas, but I condemn Israel. You shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to literally just call out bullshit when you see it. That's that should be a thing you're able to do, right? So I can't believe I'm gaining a bit of respect for Candace Owens. It this is not the this is this is a weird situation, right? Because when Candace Owens came out in defense of Anya, I was like, huh, I guess I have to side with Ben Shapiro a little bit on this one. Weird. And now I'm just like, hmm, maybe I have to side with Candace a little bit on this one. Weird. I don't like this. This is the age-old meme of the worst person you know has made a good point. It's okay for the worst person you know to make a good point sometimes. But when it happens more than once, and, you know, against each other on different sides, feels weird. It feels weird. But that's the that seems to be the situation here. Um, Candace Owens seems to be talking more about the fact that the IDF, uh, Israel, is engaged in genocidal steps towards people who are in Gaza, towards Palestinians in Gaza. Dave Rubin and everybody else seems to be taking more of the side of Israel, and they've already started getting all their information together so they can do that more easily. And here we are. Here we are. Uh, Matt Lick's response on here, I think, is funny. Matt Lick says, You can tell the people who have zero interest in supporting a genocide because they have hundreds of graphs on the growth of an unwanted population saved on their camera reel. It's, it's strange to see her good on this issue. But I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Falcon Sand says, I don't give a damn about Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine. My only concern is the United States of America. Yeah, I think that's a stupid view. I think that's a stupid view. I think it's okay to recognize that other people live in those countries and they're just as valid as anyone else. And it's okay to care about them. Like, not giving a damn about them is probably the most naive and childish thing one can do. I just just saying. Just saying. It's, it's very easy to look at your fellow human beings and go, Huh, they probably deserve to live. Isolationism is probably a dumb thing because we need other people to survive. Also, fun fact, the United States literally could not exist. We cannot exist in our current state without the help of other countries. We are not a major exporter the way that other countries are. We rely on imports from other countries. So if we don't care about those other countries at all, then we just stop getting imports from those countries and we shrivel up and kind of die. Like America as we know it doesn't exist without exports from other countries. It's what makes us us. It's what makes most of the world what it is now. 
turns out there's resources that are easier to get in other countries and it's okay for countries to be interdependent on one another because when countries are interdependent as opposed to isolationist those countries tend to get along better those countries tend to operate better together and don't dehumanize each other as much weird that anyways let me know what you guys think in the comment section below do you want ben shapiro and candace owens to just fight I know I'm kind of in favor of that. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, everybody, insert into video tagline here. All right, guys, welcome to the end of the video. Thank you for making it this far, especially after that last one. I know it was a bit of a long one, but let's get into the fan art section. The first one we have here is from Absolute Insanity 01. I'm new here, and here's some fan art, which also doubles as pose practice. So here. Thank you very, very much, Absolute Insanity. This is really, really nice. The next one we have here is from Feather Boa. A low effort meme and a slightly higher effort drawing. TV service will take the fight to, uh, to the war word toilet. I drew the sketch in the span of one of Cyrus's videos and made the meme and editing while listening to Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Huh. I guess that uh, subfaction was chosen. TV, sorry, but TV girl hot. The toilets will lose. An actual conversation that was had. <laughs> the last one we have here is from Sea Slug Friend, a lower decks surus. No. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get to the credits. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability that Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Jemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Agamoto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagitta, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.